Hey friends, and welcome back to Energy Express. It's me, your pal Joel. Today we're going to go down on the farm, to Tasty Acres Farm to be exact, and learn all about sweet potatoes. Let's get started. Hi friends, it's Miss Amy with West Virginia University Extension Service Family Nutrition Program. Welcome back to Tasty Acres Farms. Today, we're gonna visit Sweet Potato Hill. Do you know what a sweet potato is? Here's one right here. This is a sweet potato. Do you wanna guess what my plate category a sweet potato goes into? That's right, it goes into the vegetable category. It's important to remember to eat from all five food groups, but when you're eating in the fruit and vegetable category, it's important to remember to eat red and orange vegetables. They have something special in them called beta carotene. It's a micronutrient that actually helps your body fend off cancer cells. Some other nutrients that we get from sweet potatoes are vitamin A, Vitamin A helps our eyes point to your eyes. Vitamin A and also vitamin C. Make a C with your hands. Vitamin C helps us stay healthy, keeps our immune system healthy and keeps us from getting sick. So let's take a look at this sweet potato. Get it up close for you to see. What shape? would you say the sweet potato is? It's a funny shape. It doesn't, it's not perfectly circular. It's not perfectly oblong. It normally has little squishies on the end here that are a little longer and pointed, right? So it's kind of a different type of shape. I've drawn some other sweet potatoes on the board because they come in a lot of different shapes. But they're all that elongated, almost ovalish shape. What color is the sweet potato? It's orange. Some look kind of more brown than others. And that's on the outside on the peel. Say the word peel. Right, the outside peel. How do you think the sweet potato feels? It feels really hard. It's very solid. Let's cut it in half and look inside. All right, are you ready? Bam, look how orange it is inside. That's my favorite color. So let's zoom in a little so you can see how orange it is. How do you think it feels on the inside? It is very, very smooth. It also feels moist. It feels like it's wet inside. The inside is called the flesh. If you remember from when we cut open the butternut squash, the flesh was on the inside and the peel is on the outside. If you were to peel your potato, you would come down and actually just take the peel off. Right, so here is the peel, and here is the flesh or the inside of the potato. So, where do potatoes, sweet potatoes, come from? That's right, you guessed it, they come from farms. Right, we buy them at our farmer's market, which normally is in the fall here in West Virginia. You can sometimes still find them in the spring. They've been what's called held over because they're harvested in the fall. You can also find them in the grocery store. But how do sweet potatoes grow? Sweet potatoes are different than the other crops we've looked at here at Tasty Acre Farms because sweet potatoes grow from what's called a slip. Let me show you. So this is one of my old sweet potato plants and I have sprouted it in water. You can see the roots below in the bottom. You see the roots, part of the potato. It's suspended in the water by these little posts. 
and then it grows what are called slips, right? You take these slips, pull them off, pull your slips off and put them into their own pot of water and your slip will actually grow roots on it. So, unlike starting from seed, sweet potatoes grow from slips. You take your slips, once they have a nice set of roots on them like this one, and you put them into the soil. And the sweet potato actually creates a vine that you can see on top, but underneath and its roots, it's going to make more sweet potatoes. So let's make our own slip real quick. All you have to do once you have your slips sprouted from your old potato is prick them off with your fingers and put it right down into the water. And then it will grow roots and you can use it to grow more sweet potatoes. Today's story is Carl and the Meaning of Life. It was written by Deborah Friedman. Carl was not a bird. Carl was not a bear or a beaver. Carl was an earthworm. He lived underground, moving, always moving, burrowing, tunneling, digesting dead leaves, feasting and casting, turning hard dirt into fluffy soil day after day. Here he is moving through. Why? Asked a field mouse gathering seeds. Why do you do that? Why? Carl did not know why, but now he needed to find out. So Carl stopped making fluffy soil. I'll be right back, he told the field mouse. He spotted a rabbit. Maybe she knew. Why do I do what I do, he asked her. Oh, goodness dear, she said. I do not know. I do what I do for my babies. But Carl did not have babies. A fox appeared. Carl turned to the fox. Why do I do what I do, asked Carl. Who do I do it for? For whom, replied the fox. Alas, my meal awaits. I am here for the hunt. But Carl did not want to hunt. Why are you talking to a fox, cried a squirrel. Carl was startled because the field mouse is waiting and wanting to know what I'm here for. The squirrel declared, I am here to plant trees. Trees are where I sleep. But Carl could not sleep, not high in a tree and not without an answer for the mouse, he pushed on. What? And on, hours turned into days until the soil was no longer fluffy. The ground around Carl turned barren and dry. Who? While he continued to search, why? Sigh. But the birds had flown off to find grasses and fluff. The bear trundled away to look for berries. Soon there was nobody left to talk to. What about me, cried Carl. The clouds were silent, so was the air. I will never find out, he sniffled. Then Carl sniffle echoed, followed by a squeak. I can't find any grubs, a voice cried. It was the saddest ground beetle he had ever seen. Carl peeked under a stone, no grubs. Then he poked at the dirt. It was hard like a rock. Where was his fluffy soil? Suddenly, Carl knew what he needed to do. I'll be back, he promised. For hours into days, weeks into months, Carl munched, digested, left castings, and turned and turned that hard dirt back into rich soil. 
You made my seeds grow, said the mouse. Clover blossomed once again and the rabbit came back with her kids. The squirrel returned to plant new trees. The fox was lured by the hunt. All of them able to do what they do. How? Well, why not ask Carl? The end. Thanks for joining me for story time today. It's one of my favorite stories that shows you no matter how small, everyone has a part to play. Today's recipe is oven baked sweet potato planks. Let's go check out Susan in the kitchen. Hi, my name is Susan Lilly and I work for WVU Extension Service and the Family Nutrition Program. Today, I would like to show you how to make oven baked sweet potato planks or wedges. And this is a very easy recipe. It calls for very few ingredients. You will need two sweet potatoes and you're gonna need a half a teaspoon of salt and an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper and you are gonna need some type of non-stick cooking spray. And the first thing we're gonna do is I have already prepped my vegetables and washed my hands. I scrubbed my sweet potatoes and I cut off any of the spots that might not have looked too appealing. I cut those off and I've already pre-done one of the potatoes, but we're gonna do one together. The first thing we need to do though, is we're going to preheat our oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So it'll be ready when we're ready. And the next thing I'm gonna do is spray our pans with a little bit of non-stick cooking spray. And I'm gonna put that on our pans. Now I'm also using a little bit of parchment paper and I would like to test it, but I did not get that done today. But you might not need the spray originally if you're using the parchment paper. So you might wanna try that at home. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this sweet potato in half. Sweet potatoes are very healthy. We left the peel on, so we're getting lots of fiber and we're getting lots of vitamins and minerals that our bodies need. And this is one of our dark orange vegetables we should be eating more of. Now, this is a root vegetable, it grows underground. If you didn't wanna use sweet potatoes, you could use other root vegetables like parsnips or turnips, uh, uh, even a mixture of all of them together and sweet potato and regular baking potatoes. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it in half. Now, they are pretty dense. You wanna be careful when you're cutting and I'm just gonna to try to take it slow and split it in half. So there we go, it's split in half. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to cut each half into eight wedges. So what I did is I just kinda of all eyeballed it and I did just little slits to count how many wedges and then I'm gonna go back, it's kinda of like a little pre-cut lines to follow. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. So I wanna do the same thing on this one. Pre-cutting my little wedges. Now, one thing you wanna remember is the thicker your wedges, the longer they're gonna to have to cook. Cause your cooking time is gonna be 20 to 30 minutes. So if you cut really thick planks, you're gonna be cooking it quite a bit longer than that. And you're just wanting to cook it until it's, it's just about done. And you know, I'm keeping my fingers away. I'm trying to stay on top of the knife so I don't have my fingers down there where they're gonna get bit. All right, so do this one. And last one, use a little pressure and get it down. All right, so there we have our planks. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay our planks out on our pan that we have already pre-sprayed. I'll get them on there. We'll spread them out. May not be able to get them all on to this one. All right. 
So now you're gonna want to take that cooking spray again and you're just gonna give them a light coat. And I am using an olive oil spray. And then we are going to just lightly salt and pepper them. Salt and pepper. All right. I didn't even use all my salt, so. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pop these in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes, and then we will pop them back out and see how they're doing. Okay, so we've gotten our sweet potatoes out of the oven to check them. I'm just gonna see how tender they are there. Pretty tender, even our thicker pieces. The, now remember, the thicker you cut these, the longer it'll take for them to bake. Now, they're ready to go. If you wanted to, you could add a little bit of Parmesan cheese to them just to add a little bit of extra flavor. I'm just gonna sprinkle just a little bit on one pan. I'm gonna leave the other pan um, the way it is because I wanna taste them both ways. Okay, so we have our sweet potato planks. These would make a great snack uh, when uh, the kids come home from school. This would make a great uh, a side dish for any meal. If I fix these with the two sweet potatoes, that would feed eight adults four wedges each and 16 children two wedges each. And this is a really easy recipe. And you can find other recipes like this on our YouTube channel. So I hope you enjoy. We have a fun activity in store for you today. Let's go visit Miss Tracy and see what she's up to. Hi, my name's Tracy and I work for West Virginia University's Extension Service Family Nutrition Program. And today we are going to be making fairy, gnome, Lego, whatever kind of little miniature life garden you would like to make. So we need a variety of different items. I've kind of been scouring my house for whatever I could find um, that I thought would be fun. I found some popsicle sticks. I found some different color ribbons. I found some beads. Let's see, some more string. Um, we're definitely gonna need scissors. Let's see. Oh, I found some paper straws. I thought these might be kind of fun to work with as well. And then you'll need some different adhesives. So um, you can use tape or stick glue, a stapler, anything like that that you can use to kind of attach your items together. Then the next step is to go for a walk or a hike um, around and you're gonna look for, um, let's see, whatever kind of found items you can find. So. Um, I suggest bringing a basket with you. Make sure you always ask for a parent's permission if you're gonna leave the house um, or go somewhere or um, this is a really fun activity to do with your family to go on a hike and find some found items. The rule of thumb is that if it's laying there and it's not attached to anything, um, that it's okay to pick up some things. So I found, let's see, I found all different kinds of sticks in different shapes and sizes and thickness. I found these itty bitty, let me see if I can get them out of my basket. These itty bitty um, pine cones. I thought they would be really cute. And then I found a couple um, rocks I thought I could paint or um, this one I thought would be like a cool table perhaps. And um, so I got a couple different rocks, a couple different sticks. And then from here, it's really your imagination. Um, let's see, I love, if you've got some wire, um, this could be a clothes, um, what do you call it? Like a clothing hanger, and you can just do a little twist at the top, and you get a parent's help with this. And we can string some beads on to make kind of a little hanger, um, or like a pretty garland. So I'm gonna put some beads on this one. I like to use bright different colors. Um, this could attract some pollinators to our garden, maybe some bees or bugs or butterflies. 
And so once I get a couple on here, I'm going to kind of do another little twist to do here. And then I could stick that in the ground. I could trim it um, with my scissors and I could trim it and I could stick this in the ground. So I'm going to save that and put it over there. So next we're going to make some garland and I'm going to use two sticks that are about the same size. And then I'm going to cut some string or ribbon or floss, whatever you have. Um, make it a little bit longer than you're going to want your garland so that you have an opportunity to um, make a knot on either side. So I'm going to just tie a little double knot on one side and then I'm going to go to my other side, save that little piece of stick for something else and tie a double knot. So now, as you can see, I have a garland and you can do your garland however you want. Um, I like to use, you can use ribbon um, and just tie like a whole bunch of fun different size ribbons, but I like to use the foam paper so that when I put it outside, it lasts. And what I like to do is make triangles. So I'm going to fold my paper in half and I want it to be double sided. So it's pretty on both sides. I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to cut some triangles. So when I cut it in half, now I have a pretty little triangle. So I'm going to cut a couple of those. So I've got some purple triangles. Let me do a couple green ones. So now I'm going to take my half sheet and when I fold it over, it makes my little triangle and I'm going to alternate my colors, making a pattern, purple, green, and then next is purple and I'm just folding them back in half and then next is purple. I think this foam is my favorite because I don't have to use any glue. And there we've got some garland. So now we've got garland. We've got our little bead wand. Um, I kind of like this as like a little table so we could get out our paint. Whenever my kids are painting, I always make them put out some brown paper. So I put out some brown paper and I've got, let's see, what I think would be really cool is I'm just going to paint the plates. So we're going to pretend this is a, a table. So I'm just going to paint plates, like little place settings on my table and maybe some silverware. So I'm going to draw, let's see, a knife and maybe a spoon. And you know what? That doesn't actually look like a knife or a spoon. Kind of just looks like lines. So we're going to go with it. Oh, um, I have some clay. If you have some air dry clay, you can make some different accessories, molding out um, some different accessories. The other idea I had was to use like some Lego characters that you can use in your garden. You can use um, little cups um, as stools around your garden. And I brought out, let's see, I brought in one of my herb gardens. Whoop. So here's my herb garden and I'm going to carefully move my paint so I don't make a mess. So here's my herb garden. I'm going to hang my garland with the garland or the chives in my face here. I'm going to hang my garland just like this. Maybe see if we can attract some fairies and some pollinators with my pretty garland. Okay. So I've got my garland. Where did my little, let's see. Oh, Here's my pretty little spinner. I can put it in there and I could put my little table over here. It looks like it would fit over here. And then I'm going to take my little Lego characters from down here and I'm going to put them in my fairy garden. You can also make fences out of your sticks. Um, I could tie all different kinds of, um, I lost my ribbon under my scraps here. Um, we can tie all different colors of ribbon. I just love kind of working with it and playing with it. We can add different things to our garden throughout the year as we find um, new objects. I like to tie ribbon. Try to be careful not to use any paper products. 
um, because as soon as that wonderful rain comes, it's going to kind of destroy our garden. So try to use things like fabrics, foams, maybe some plastics or natural items. And just like that, I have turned my herb garden into a fairy garden. I hope you guys come up with some creative ideas as well and get out into your garden. Don't forget to weed your beds and make sure they have plenty of water and some fairies or gnomes as well. Bye guys. Let's go get some physical activity with Miss Shannon now. Hi everybody, I'm Miss Shannon and today we're gonna to be doing Simon Says physical activity style. This is my friend Van and he's gonna help us out today. I'm gonna to step off camera and Van's gonna play Simon Says with you. Are you ready Van? Yeah. Great. Simon says, let's do 10 jumping jacks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Simon says, arm circles. Good job, Van. Stand on one foot. Great job, Van. Simon did it say. Simon says, twirl in circles. Simon says, hop on your right foot five times. Simon says, hop on your left foot five times. Run on your tippy toes. Good job, Van. Simon did it say. Step to your left two times. Simon says, step to your right two times. Simon says, step to your left two times. Great job, man. Simon says, sit in an invisible chair 10 times. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Great job. Balance on your right foot. Good job, man. Simon did it say. Now, Simon says, balance on your left foot for 10 seconds. Great job, Van. Simon says, hop like a bunny. Great job. Simon says, stand up on your tippy toes. Good job, Van. All right, Simon says, let's stretch. Arms up above our head and stretch down and touch your toes. Great job, one more time, up and down. Very good, thanks for all your help, Van. Wow, that was so much fun. Thank you for being here today and I look forward to seeing you next week. Hey friends, did you have fun? What was your favorite part of today? Those sweet potato planks looked fantastic. And who doesn't love a good game of Simon Says? Well, we'll see you again soon here on Tasty Acre Farm. Have a great day.